it definitely seems like the goats are back in town with the exception of Eagle McMahon. Let's talk about how we got what feels like a 2019 event leading up to the first major of the year at Music City Open. It certainly feels like it was just everything that we wanted. It felt like just candy. All the players that felt like old guard were seriously showing up today like nobody else. Now that is definitely not to say that the younger players did not play well. AB finished seventh, Nicholas finished fifth, and Ganon Burr finished in seventh. But really all these players were just so far out of it in the final round that there was no way they were really going to fight back for a win, with the exception of Ganon Burr. He is definitely a player that I feel like has so many streaky moments. Even though he has the putter dialed, he has a great forehand. There are just so many moments during the final round in particular where it just feels like he kind of lost his momentum, especially on the putting green. It is not like his putter is like shaky, but it certainly seems like he's very tentative on his powerful putts, which is making him second guess himself. And then it chains out and it just feels like a very bad series of momentum for Ganon. But I certainly hope that over time he builds up a consistent putting pattern that feels right for him on any particular chain. And it certainly brings up the notion, why can't we have one consistent basket on tour? Someday, maybe, we'll see. But with five OBs and five circle one misses, that is just not what you need to fight for the win. So let's talk about the players that were actually in contention. And it feels so bizarre to say it, but Germ, Jeremy Colling, was fighting for a podium finish and played the absolute lights out. So even though he didn't play particularly high rated disc golf, it is still well above his rating with almost a 1050 with his final round being 1061. And I really can't comment too much upon his his entire tournament because it wasn't on coverage. But whenever he was, he was jamming in circle two putts and being an absolute delight to watch. Now, I don't think him or the fans realistically thought that he had a chance to win it, but it was so cool to see him fight for a podium finish when you definitely don't think of Germ as being somebody that can fight for a podium finish in many events at all. So once again, I'm very excited to see this momentum going into Champions Cup. But realistically, Germ, I just, I'm not gonna put you in a podium finish. But then we move on to the podium finishers and it feels so reminiscent of 2019 disc golf. I love it. Obviously, we gotta start with who has been winning this event for for nearly a decade, your boy C. Dickerson. And I will definitely say his final round didn't feel particularly polished, didn't feel like he had a lot of momentum going into it, but he did finish the last 10 holes with seven birdies, but with missing four circle one putts in the event and just generally not having a great circle two percentage with 29%, that is just not going to cut it. And even though he did not go OB hardly at all, there was just a lack of consistency for fighting for birdies. With one of the lowest birdie percentages in the top 10, there was just no way he had enough chances to really fight for the win, regardless of how good or bad his putting was. But with that said, we have not seen Dickerson really much in the mix this entire year, so it is definitely good to see him gain some momentum, especially going into a major, which he certainly has the potential to take down. But I gotta say, if you're able to go about 800 every round and throw some of the most ridiculous rollers and have so much touch on these wooded sections, then you are definitely playing above the rest. But going on to who we consider the GOATs, let's talk about Ricky, Paul, and Simon. So Ricky was not really on coverage all that often, but whenever he was, he was doing very, very well. And with only one circle one miss and with gaining 9.25 strokes on putting. He was definitely above the rest with his phenomenal looking putts. I don't know what got into him, but he certainly has the same power and momentum on his putts that he used to, and it certainly seems like he has his confidence back in full swing. But even though his confidence may be back, his ability to stay in bounds was definitely not. With his last round getting four OBs and his final hole looking like he might get a second place finish, there was what I believe to be, I, I can't tell for sure, but based on coverage, there was a spotter that was in the way of the disc going from out of bounds to inbounds, and then the spotter, I believe, hits it, making it basically impossible for Ricky to birdie, and he takes a bogey on the final hole, which puts him two strokes back of second place. But hey, even even with those four OB strokes, he still finished his final round with eight under, 1055 rated. And honestly, it looks like all the components of his game are back, even if he doesn't have the same consistency as he needs to to take down the event. This is still a very good outcome for him, but also much like the heyday of disc golf, he is always falling one step short of the GOAT, Paul Macbeth. Macbeth at 69. I just told myself, you've got to will this one in there. Whatever you have, just will it in there. This man, unbelievable. This is what athletes live for. This is the moment. And talking about Paul, this is certainly what feels like a very weird era for him. He still has so much of his game intact, but there's obviously so many more obligations that he has, and it seems like his disc golf game has certainly taken a step back, especially with his injury. But with that said, he's still really trying to find his momentum, figure out what works for him, and this is certainly a good showcase of that. With his first second place finish since 2022 at Ledgestone, this certainly feels like Paul is back, with so much of his game looking very, very strong, and him seemingly being very reliant on his forehands, which I don't really recall 
all being the case in the past, but it looks so smooth, so dialed, basically effortless, and his putts looking as good as ever. I will say the only thing that didn't really look the most comfortable was his turnover backhands, but I certainly think that is something that he builds over time because he was used to having so many reps that he's feeling ultra confident with those backhands, so maybe not having the most amount of reps is just something that will improve over time. But I will say the one thing that I noticed that I feel like continues to be a trend for Paul is that when he is behind, he seems to have a very weird mentality where he feels like he has to run every single putt and play ultra aggressive. When I feel like there are so many moments where you really don't have to push that much because that is when things go wrong and you miss your easy lines because you're trying to chew off too much. Now with that said, I don't think he was ever going to take Simon down, but I do think he has the potential to gain a couple of strokes by not playing as aggressive, especially in those moments where he is very pinched off. But enough about Paul and Ricky, let's talk about the winner of the Music City Open, Simon Lazat. I truly do not know what it is with Simon, but for whatever reason, when he doesn't feel good, doesn't feel confident, that seems to be when he is just playing his absolute best disc golf. And that was certainly showcased in this tournament. Starting out with a heater of 12 under, 1076 rated, there was basically nobody that was in contention to take him down at any point. Now with that said, he had to make so many good putts along the way, but he put himself in good spots basically the entire tournament. So even though he had to make some long putts, he was able to do that because he had so many good looks. And a very crazy stat is that he only missed one circle one putt the entire event, nearly making 30 circle one putts. But what's even crazier is that he almost had 40% from circle two. And I truly think some of these putts should not have gone in. I don't think Simon thinks they should have gone in, but he has that confident spin putt that even if it doesn't look the most dead center of the chains, it'll just continue its trajectory way better than most putts. And that certainly saved him a lot of strokes on this event. And I just love that there were so many moments where even Simon was in disbelief. He's like, no way that went in. That was just like a terrible putt. But Simon just has that mentality that he doesn't think he's a good player. He doesn't really think he's ever going to be good enough to take down an event, but it continues to be the trend, especially at this event. I feel like everything went my way. The sloppy putts went in. The other guys got bad luck. I got good luck. That's how it goes sometimes. It's a wild game. I, I can't explain how it happened but then suddenly everything goes in. It's just, I don't know how, it's wild. Continuing his ability to be undefeated at Music City Open. And I truly think so much about this course is just hitting good lines, not doing too much power, and just putting yourself in a position to get a good enough circle one putt, which is really the skill set that Simon has. He really has a lot of power, but he doesn't really need it. He doesn't really show it very much. This course is way more about control, especially on your second and third shots on these par four and fives. And I am so excited for Simon taking down this event, because at least for me, I keep having the worry. I don't know if Simon will take down event for the rest of his career, but he continues to prove that wrong and show how good of a player he truly is. And I am just absolutely stoked for him, especially as he takes a break with his second kid. Very exciting way to take his hiatus, taking down the Music City Open and getting his second guitar at this event. I know he's going to be shredding it on his next video, so I look forward to that. But with all that said, thank you guys so much for watching. This has been an absolute amazing experience to watch, and I highly recommend you watch the Jomez. It is going to be very, very fun. So with that said, what do you guys think about this event? Did you like it? not like it, I'd love to know. Wild Runs, signing out, peace.